Wow, this is crazy. We are 800 feet above the ground right now. Hey everyone, I'm Alice. I love the outdoors and adventure. I created this channel to inspire you to get out and see more of the natural world. I travel solo almost all the time. And when I'm not exploring national parks, I'm hiking, backpacking, or immersing myself into a unique culture. And I am really excited to bring you along. So hit the subscribe button and let's go. A warm welcome everyone to West Virginia where I'm spending a few days exploring New River Gorge National Park. This is America's newest national park, at least as the date of filming this, and it's also West Virginia's first ever national park. It's about 73,000 acres and it protects what was once just a national scenic riverway that became protected around 1978. Now, just a couple years ago, this area added about 7,000 acres and became a national park. And for years, it's been a place for world-class whitewater rafting, rock climbing, and hiking and biking. And now that it's designated as a national park, it's bringing in a lot more visitors to see this beautiful area, including me and all of you that are watching this today. So I don't have a ton of time. so. I'd love to do some whitewater rafting and rock climbing on another trip, but on this one, I'm just going to be exploring by car and on foot, showing you as many of the hiking trails and things to do in just a couple of days that we can fit in. I have driven down here to West Virginia from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's just over a three hour drive, so getting a little bit of a late start on my first day here in the park and stopped by the Canyon Rim Visitor Center when I arrived. And now I'm doing one of the popular trails in this section of the park, which is called the Long Point Trail, which is gonna take us to see some of the best views of the bridge. I am visiting in the springtime, AKA the mud season. So if you're coming here, definitely wear some hiking boots that you don't mind getting muddy and stay on the trail. New River Gorge became a national park in 2020 and protects around 30 miles of riverway and land along the New River. One of its most famous features is the New River Gorge Bridge, but that's not the only thing you should see here. The park also has world-class fishing and whitewater rafting, historic railroad towns and mine sites, waterfalls, scenic vistas, and miles of trails for hiking and biking. This is certainly one of the more popular trails in the park and there's 70,000 acres here. So there's a lot more to see. So we're gonna head down to the Southern side of the park, which is a little bit less visited to check out some of the trails. I am currently making my way down to the Southern side of the park. And one of the unique things about this park is because it was National Scenic River well before it was a national park there's quite a bit of like private property within it and it's really just this corridor along the river that has become part of the national park so getting from one end to the other takes a little bit of time about an hour and a half from the top of the park near Fayetteville to the section that we're going to right now and the road to get there is very very windy this park has seven sections that all have different hikes and activities and here in the south one of the really nice trails is out to sandstone falls along the boardwalks this is just 0.3 miles and it's on these nice wooden raised platforms comes right along the river here super beautiful and very doable for pretty much anyone in your family whether you've got a dog or you're in a wheelchair this is a great hike to choose. It's already 5 p.m. The day has just flown by and I have not seen as much of the park as I would have hoped, but that's what happens when you get a late start and don't get into the park until around lunchtime. So I'm gonna head right now to another section of the park a little bit kind of in the southern middle section and try to get one more hike in before we head back up towards Fayetteville to check into our cabin where we'll be spending the night. 
Right now we're in a section of the park called Grand View, and behind me is the Grand View main overlook, just a couple hundred feet from the parking lot here, and has some fantastic views over the river with the train tracks below. There's a couple of trails that you can do from here. I'm going to see if I can make it down the Grand View Rim Trail for a little bit until we lose the light and see what we can see of this amazing and deep canyon here. Change of plans. Right next to the rim trail is the Cedar Creek Trail, which looked like it had some pretty cool views along the canyon wall. It's just 0.6 miles, so I'm gonna check this out first, and then we're gonna head back on the rim trail afterwards. A couple of nice things about this national park that I've learned over the last couple of hours is, number one, there's actually no entrance fee to this national park because it is so spread out and there's not really any way to gauge or put gates because a lot of this is just spread out on different highways and roads all throughout this really large area um, along this river. There is no specific entry gates so anyone can come and explore here without a national park pass. Uh, there's a couple of different visitor centers, uh, one here at Grandview, the one that I visited this morning, and then there's one down uh, by the Sand Creek boardwalks that I was just at as well. So a couple of different places if you want to get information about the park as well. And another thing that I think a lot of people will be excited about with this national park is that Pretty much all the trails are dog friendly. Now always make sure that your dog is on a leash if you are bringing them with you on a hike. But unlike most national parks in the US where dogs are only allowed on roads or in campgrounds, so far in this park I've seen dogs on pretty much all the trails and no dogs off limits signs, which is pretty nice if you're a dog owner and coming to explore national parks. Pretty cool walking along these big cliffs of sandstone here. The river is down below and the sun is just starting to go down so it's, it's getting really pretty out there. I'm hoping we can get up to the rim and see a little bit more of the colors here. It's a brown time to be here in the kind of pre-spring time here, the mud season. We don't have a lot of colors yet but the crowds are definitely fewer at this time of year and I don't always get to choose when I'm gonna be in these areas, so I'm glad that I can just come and experience this park, even though it's not the prettiest season, but come spring, summer, and fall, it is absolutely beautiful in here and definitely extremely colorful. Now, I was in Fayetteville earlier today talking to some locals, and one of the things that they shared with me that has just been a little bit of an issue here in this park since it's become a national park is the lack of education when it comes to leave no trace principles. So I wanted to just give a little reminder. If you don't know what the leave no trace principles are. I'm going to pop them on the screen here. If you're coming into any of the areas of nature, <laughs> really just leaving your house, there are some things that we should just always do to respect not only nature but each other. One of those is making sure we're not littering on the trail. If you're bringing anything out into nature, whether that's food, water, or your belongings, make sure that you're bringing them back out with you. You can always find garbage cans at a gas station or back at your house that you came from. You don't need to be leaving your garbage on the trail. If you've lighting a campfire somewhere, make sure you're following the correct rules for that too. And always give wildlife adequate space and respect as well when you're out here in nature. Keep your voices low, let other people enjoy the sights and sounds of nature too. What a beautiful place to end this first day here in the park. This is the Turkey Spur Overlook. If you continue on the rim trail, you can connect to this, or you can just drive right up to the bottom and take the stairs up here. And the sun is just setting on the other side, turning the mountains behind me into this beautiful orange color. 
and it is certainly a great spot to end this first full day here in the park. All right, I just checked into my cabin. I'm staying at this place called Adventures on the Gorge, which is really close to the main visitor center and the bridge as well in downtown Fayetteville, about a five minute drive to both. And this is basically this huge kind of camp where people can park their RVs, you can camp, you can rent cabins. There are all kinds of different sizes from single ones like the one I'm in to like four or five bedroom uh, huge things. They've got disc golf, a pool, restaurants, coffee shop, um, basically everything that you would need. So this is a really great family spot and it was actually pretty inexpensive. It is, as I've said in this video, the off season. So it kind of picks up here around mid-May, Memorial Day, you know, esque around there. and is pretty busy until mid-October. So not everything is open, but I got a pretty good nightly rate on this cabin, which is pretty spacious. Um, got a nice like big uh, bedroom in here, bathroom, just a mini fridge and a microwave, N no like dishes or anything like that, which is fine. Uh, my only complaint, well, I have two complaints. One, it smells a bit in here, probably like, wet dogs. I'm sure that this is also probably a pet friendly cabin. So that's always kind of a challenge when you don't have dogs and you rent a place like this, kind of just dealing with the, that is what it is. And the other complaint that I have is that this place has styrofoam cups. I mean, come on, there's so many other things you can buy. I know that that's like the cheapest thing in a place that's trying to be a budget accommodation is uh, trying to cut corners. And I don't think that's a corner anyone should cut because styrofoam is incredibly bad for the planet and for the people where they also make styrofoam cups. But um, I won't rant on about it too long. I'm gonna get some shut eye. We've got a fun day planned tomorrow. And um, we're starting in the morning with uh, a really cool perspective on getting to see the bridge at the beginning of the park here. Good morning, everyone. I'm just standing at one of the overlooks here at Adventures on the Gorge. The bridge is just over there, the beautiful river down below, and the sunlight is starting to come down from above. This morning, we're heading over to the bridge, and it is undoubtedly the most iconic feature here in this park. The one thing people really come to see here. And as we've seen, there's a lot more to this park, but this morning, we're gonna get a closer look of the bridge not just walking across it, but walking underneath it. Now this bridge was built back in 1977 and at the time it was actually the longest single span steel bridge in the world. It's now fifth on the list, but it is the third highest bridge in America and it spans more than 3,030 feet across. And this walk that we're gonna be doing is a little bit death defying. We're gonna be looking down far, far, far below into the river below. The bridge walk is a very unique way to get a look at this river and the bridge itself, which is not actually open to pedestrian traffic. You're strapped into a high line with a harness and some safety cables to walk a narrow catwalk 3,000 feet across the bridge. Railings and a lot of metal in all directions make you feel relatively safe while you're up here. Just don't look down for too long. Definitely not your typical Sunday. Done with the bridge walk. That was actually really fun. Cold and windy up there, but what a beautiful perspective just on the river down below, 
and also the scenic drive that goes along the road that used to be the only way people could get across this area before the bridge that we were just walking underneath was built in the 70s. So I'm gonna take you guys on that scenic drive right now. It takes about 40 minutes. I believe it's about seven miles and there's lots of places where we're gonna stop and take in some of the beauty of the river and the bridge from underneath. And then I'm gonna take you to one of the historic towns here. Now coal mining, there's a lot of history of that in this area and many towns came springing to life when coal was the big business here uh, back in the early 1900s and up until about the mid 1960s. So still a couple of towns that you can explore within this national park and in the surrounding area. So that's where we're gonna head after our scenic drive. can't get far here in West Virginia without talking about coal. It is really the historic driver of the economy here and behind me is actually one of the historic towns where many people working in the coal mines in the early 1900s lived. It's called Thurmond. It's one of several historic towns that you can explore here in New River Gorge. There's only three buildings left but this was right along the CNO railroad line right on the river so it brought in people from all over to work in the mines and back then the conditions were horrendous and the pay was also very, very low. But when those miners got their paychecks, they came here to spend that money. And there's a couple other towns that you can explore here in the park. If you're interested in the history of mining, the history of the railroad, these are certainly great places to check out. We've seen a mining town and what's behind me is actually one of the old mines in this area. This was called the Noodleberg Mine and they processed coal out of here for 85 years. Nowadays you won't find any miners in there but you will find bats and I want to show you something else while we're up here. This behind me is the head house of the mine. So this is where coal would come out of the mountain here. They would load it on to these carts. It would come into the head house here and then it would go down this mountain to the bottom of the gorge where it would get on trains and travel across the country. Noodleberg Mine was my last stop on my trip down to New River Gorge, but I left a little leeway for my three hour drive home to stop at some roadside attractions. Let me know in the comments, are you into roadside attractions? I'm usually not, but my sister always sends me all of these things on Roadside America, things that are near and far from the highway, kitschy Americana type stuff, or just bizarre. And one of the ones that was in this area was actually the only lighthouse in West Virginia. Yes, we're not on the ocean here, or even a lake, but there is a lighthouse, and it actually, I guess originally it was built as a wind turbine and later converted to this.